time to talk. Today I have a, a very young, beautiful lady. Someone you know, obviously. But her story, I tell you, is not only motivational, but it will keep you on your toes. It doesn't matter how old you think you are. It's going to be a new beginning for you. Join me as I make welcome. Miss Sarah. Can we go with you, <laughs> you are welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You are welcome. Thank you. You look so good. Thank you. You do too. Please have awesome. a seat. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> welcome Thank to you. our heart. To this beautiful house. Thank you. It's an honor to have you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. For those people that don't know who you are, mm -hmm. I always like people to say like their names because most times you pronounce it more better. Yeah. So tell us your name and who you are. Okay. Um, my name is Sarah Audu. I am the founder and the lead creator of Si Abuja and Si Lagos. Basically, lifestyle platforms that showcase the city of Abuja and Lagos. That's basically what we do. You look very, very interesting already. Thank you. Yeah. So, it's going to be a little time today because when I read about you, when I saw you, when I mm -hmm. heard about you, yesterday was like, you took me back. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I was very emotional. I was like, my God. I need to speak with this lady. I want to know mm -hmm. things that people don't know. Like people know you. Mm -hmm. Maybe they know you as a designer, as an influencer, but some things they don't know about you. Today, I want to try to bring it out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll try my best. Okay. Yeah. So call your friends. Call your friends. And your neighbors and tell them it's time to talk so today i have in the house miss sarah beautiful young lady with positive energy i, I don't know where she gets it from but we're gonna know that today okay i'm ready <laughs> i'm ready <laughs> yeah because when you meet people that are young mm -hmm. In a certain age, mm -hmm. you want to know what are they thinking, mm -hmm. which is part of our vision, our motto, to always know how people think, to know why do you do the things you do okay. in this certain way. Mm. But for you, it is, you know, you, you are supposed to be an ambassador, for real, mm. an ambassador for the youth, mm -hmm. an ambassador, because that power, that motto, I don't know what where you get it from, but today we're going to know. Okay. So first I want to ask you, let's start from the viral post that made, uh, you know, about your journey, the viral post about your content. And then how old were you then when it all started? Okay. Um, so to, to talk about okay. that. Okay. Oh yeah. That's okay. you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I wouldn't consider this viral. To be honest, but no, but that's your beginning, right? Yeah, this this is no. This funny enough, this is actually not my beginning. Okay. But this is a picture at some point on the journey. Okay. They, I mean, if you see it now, you see me now. Of you course, can already tell. Of course. All right. So um, I started content creation about ten years ago. Started in university, and it was just something. I think at the time there was a rise of people doing blogs. At that time, there were a lot of people going into it, and I was like, okay, I saw somebody doing it. I was like, oh. This looks interesting. I think I could do this. Let me just try it out. So I started doing, um, creating content or blogging on a blog. I don't know if you familiar with the time where people used to write on blog, blogger.com or wordpress.com. So we document and share our experiences. That was before Instagram, mm -hmm. TikTok even came about. Because now you have people who create content solely on Instagram. But back then we would post on our websites. And Instagram, when I started, Instagram wasn't as big as it is now. So that's how I started. And I started um, creating fashion content about myself at about, about 10 years ago. Yeah, this is, this is one of the pictures. I remember this particular shoot day. 
<laughs> is this in your school? Then? No, oh. I this this picture was shot in Nigeria shortly after I finished university. Okay. okay I think this was before NYSC or after I I can't recall, but some somewhere along that timeline. Shot. Where so you? Where was your university? I studied in Thailand. Okay. I studied in Bangkok, Thailand. So I started over there. But all these images that you're scrolling, this these were all taken in Nigeria. Hmm. Mm. This is beautiful. Mm. Ten years ago. Yeah. So how old were you as at this time? Mm, I was about 20, 19, 20. At this time? I, at, no, at the time I started. But at this time, I think I was like 20, 22, yeah, okay. 21 at about that age. Okay. Because yeah. I taught you at 17. No, 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 That's no. What I, I, I started um, content creation at 17. At 17. That was when I was already in university. That's when I started um, creating content. Wow, you must be a very, I don't know, you know what they call bookworms in school? You know how, like, there's some schools in California, mm. like, when you get to certain grade in the elementary, mm. they separate the kids. Mm -hmm. So you have the ones that are, you know, like... A plus, okay, like a principal role kids, okay. they have the different class, okay. And doing the research, they also have the demarcation. Mm. So you are like the one for the principal role. Uh. <laughs> uh, right? Uh, well, I'm curious to know what makes you say that. Yeah, because for you to be at 17, even if blogging just started, isn't mm. everyone at that time that would have. Yeah, need, you do understand. Mm. Yeah, people were busy for I mean, things that are more that they can physically mm -hmm. relate to it at that point in time. But you know, when you are when you're as a student, it's a hobby, so it wasn't there was no pressure. It was just like, oh, you know, this looks interesting. Let's try. Okay, then you try it. Oh, I like this. I enjoy. It. Let's just keep. Let's just keep going. So it's just more. It was more of a thing to just pass time, and then just something to do for fun mm, at the at the start of the journey. Well, it's going to be your ride. Mm. So I want to mention, I want to um, ask another question. Mm. I want to know, as um, they say, so as a young teenager, you could have focus solely. I mean, at this time in your life, even if you are still in school at mm -hmm. the time, you know, that time you're free, you're not with your parents. Yeah. I mean, the first day I got into campus, mm -hmm. you won't believe what I did. <laughs> Do you want to tell us? <laughs> I don't know. No. <laughs> the first day I packed my bag for my parents' home mm. to the university mm -hmm. was a party night. <laughs> I went for party. For real. Wow. So now you, no, for yeah. Mm. Now you as a teenage, because you're not 18. Yeah. You're a young teenager. Mm. You're not for, you are not after men at mm. the time. How come you had your head all wrapped about, all wrapped around, you know, even if it's for fun. Mm. I mean, how come you were not distracted? Well, I mean, now, I think because we're, we're having this conversation, because now it's like, it's, it's, a, it's good to be a content creator now. Yes. But that's what I'm trying to say. When it started, there was no... Um, every, people were just doing that. People had been doing it for years. I don't think the career path... I don't think there was ever a career or aspirational thing. Someone would tell you, hey, I want to be a content creator. Hey, I want to be a blogger, Right. So to be honest, even at the time when it started, I remember people that started following me that they used they would look at me like, "What's this one doing?" You know that like mm. like this one, like because it, it kind of because especially the fact that I started with um fashion, so it's like, "Are you is this person even serious?" You know that kind of look, right? But for me, like I said, it, it's just it was just something to do for fun. It gave a sense of purpose, and then I, I always felt like you know I don't you know how people have special talents. I just excelled at school. I was really good with the academics, but I, I wasn't good at any sports. I didn't know how to do any specific thing. So I was like, okay, let's try this. And I tried it and I started doing you it. You just was, mentioned it. And it was good. Right it's time to talk. Welcome, guys. This is the Kindly Crowder Show. Today we have with us Miss Sarah Aldo. A beautiful young lady, very intelligent. You know, sometimes people see women like empty head. They see women like, you know, a kitchen stuff. They see women, I know you see one that's doing well in your mind, she has a mind behind her. You know, this thing should be history. Women should be respected. It's not every woman that is sleeping around. It's not every woman that you think got what she got 
because she had one man in her mind. We should stop thinking and seeing women less because we are one. Be you a man, be you a woman. And you as a woman, don't bring yourself down. Don't think less of yourself. Don't think that you have to sleep with a man to get it right. Don't think like that. Whatever you have, start doing something. You never know. I sold tomato with 10,000 naira. You never know. Yes, with the filthy money I had. Start something and take off the shame. You never know. You, your customer could just be the person that's going to take you to your next location. Mm -hmm. Where you're there hiding. Anyway, let me come back to where we are. So, you know, today, I want you to pick some of this. Okay. These questions, you're okay. going to open them. And let us hear the questions. Okay. How, many, how many am I supposed to pick? As much as you can take. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's just do three. Mm -hmm. Do three. Right. Okay, let's try three. So do I? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, now that you're rising to stardom, can you say there's an increase in your male suitors? Nobody knows me, so I think it's the same fair game. Okay. I'm a behind the scenes person most of the time. Okay. Unless you meet me, you won't know. Okay. Are you more productive in the morning or in the evening? In the evening. You're not, you're, you're not I'm not, I'm not a morning person, person, but I find that because of my work now, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when I wake up in the morning, I have a lot of like deadlines. So I usually just jump up from the bed and I'm like, go, 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 go. And I have a lot of energy in the morning. But in the evenings, I feel like when things just calm down a little bit, I can now focus on things that I need to catch up with. So I'm more productive in the evening. Mm. More productive. I, I think also adulthood has a way of getting to you. I can't sleep late as much as I used to. It always it affects me. Before I could sleep till wait, be up till 4 a.m. to get like two, three hours and I'm going. But if I try that now, it affects me for most of the day and I have a harder time even going like sleeping late. So I think it's getting old, maybe old age. I say old age. <laughs> wait, we're gonna talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um what's the small act of kindness that you were once shown by someone in your journey as an entrepreneur that you can never forget? Yes, I remember this one. Um I because I, I used to host classes where I was teaching people how to create content, like basically do what I was doing. And I remember one year, a lady paid for two slots. She just added, she was like, hey, I just feel like sponsoring two people. So I'm, I don't want to take the class, but I'm just going to pay for two p other people who want to take the class. And I remember like, wow, feeling so touched that someone actually thought to do that. Be because at the time, I mean, of course, the money made a difference, but I was like, wow, you know, if somebody actually even thought that she would invest in, yeah. in it it was nice and then another me memory i had was um i went to have lunch somewhere recently and i just did a post for the lady and the post did really well she sold to the point that there was no place for people to park and she came back to send ask for account number to send and why did it touch me we we do a lot of free things for people some people never come back to say thank, thank you thank you some just never, what, yes. thank you even. some don't even acknowledge it mm, right they I won't even they won't even it's Make like nothing you. happened. And I know, like we know, we know the impact we have well, on businesses. But you. yeah, but so some people, they, they pretend as if nothing happened. But this lady reached out to say thank you, first of all. And she still asked for account details to send something, mm. which wasn't a lot. But the fact that she even thought about it thought was about really, it. really nice. And I was like, this is a great, this woman is a gracious person because That's not same. a lot of people. So I don't know what it is, but sometimes people feel entitled yeah i don't know if it's is e e ego pride i don't really know what it it's is not, i don't i, don't I try say to I, don't yeah. say it was you that helped yeah you. yeah but i mean if someone does something for you and you notice a difference you don't even have to do much just say oh thank you so much yeah. Yeah. little things like that go yeah. a long way yeah mm -hmm. because when you're supporting the person yes yes to do more more, more of kindness. that yeah exactly because most people are withdrawn because exactly. of the bad people they've met for me it, it, do, it really doesn't affect me at the end of the day yeah. if i'm going to do something for someone i will do it it's just it teaches you to be smarter about mm. how you go about it so you guard yourself protect yourself but at the same time you don't try, try not to let bad experiences affect your affect outlook in life you. it's, it yes. can be really frustrating doing living no, that way you know, but we just have to 
push past every bad experience because it can limit you as well. It can just like when you have anger issues. Yes. Unforgiveness. Yes. You know, you can have unforgiveness and don't have anything in your mind. Mm. Like that there are there's some persons that are forgiving but I don't want to do anything with mm. them. Yeah. And their family. Yeah. Yeah. So they are out of your mind. Yeah. Like you're living your life. Yeah, exactly. They are not existing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, this is getting interesting. I want us to know what kept her going. We'll be right back. It's time to talk. I know some of you want to know. Ah, so this is the see Abuja I've been saying? Oh my goodness. Don't you want to know what kept her going? She's been in this business for 10 years, but came to light in a few years. Mm -hmm. Would you have waited? Do we have the patient? Do you? What kept you? What motivated? In fact, my question yesterday in my mind was this. You know, as children, you have parents, mm. and then they want to compare you with the to other sibling. Person, yes. Were you under pressure? Okay. I wasn't under pressure. I just think it's, um, if you come from a little bit of a, I wouldn't say I grew up, you know, but I grew up with a bit of privilege, which kind of helped cushion. And that's why when I talk to people who are young, I'm like, see, just try as early as you can to try things that you enjoy doing without mm. any pressure to make money, without any pressure to pay bills. Because when, when you're in that stage, you can actually focus on doing that thing without being in a hurry, right? Because obviously, I'm at this age now, if I would start content creation, what would keep me waiting for 10 years? Because of what? When I'm an adult, I have bills to pay. I can't be spending money like that, right? So what helped was that I started earlier. So I didn't have so much pressure. When I started, I was using my allowance that I was getting my pocket money to fund it. And then I got a 9 to 5. I was using it to pay for it. I used my NYSC Alawi to fund this thing as well, right? So that helped. And secondly, I really enjoy doing this outside of anything. I just really enjoy documenting. I enjoy telling stories. So you, it's something, it's, it's a business now. So it's not as fun as before because you have deadlines to meet. You have clients to talk to and all of that. But outside of all of that, it's still something that I really love, love doing. So those are the two things I would say that kept me. The fact that I wasn't under so much pressure, pressure. to figure it out fast. And then secondly, the fact that I enjoyed doing it. So regardless of whether or not it was paying or I was growing, I still kept doing it because I enjoyed doing it. And that's not to say that it wasn't easy because I almost quit so many times. I would just fall yeah. off. And I would stop posting. I've cried about it because I'm like, ah, what's going on? You know, like everybody, like, especially, especially when you start comparing, like, wow, this person started about the same time I did. And look at where they are now. And, you know, mm -hmm. you know that kind of little things that you tell yourself. But sometimes you just have to like just pick yourself up and just keep going. And I'm glad I did because it's eventually picked up. And I'm glad that it didn't pick up the time I wanted it to. Because now, if being a content creator is very profitable, five years ago, ten years ago, it wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah. Especially in Nigeria. Now you can meet somebody that tells you, yeah, my job, I create content. That's, That's what I do. Yeah. That's what I do. And people think it's like you're wasting your time. But we make really good money from doing this, right? And beyond that, you get to do what you love doing, yeah. right? And the way Nigeria is set up now, it can even be more rewarding than most nine to five jobs that will make you work morning till evening. So it's, I'm glad it picked up now at the right time when the Nigeria, like Nigeria's people are beginning to embrace content creation. I think it, coronavirus caused that. People were that lockdown year, people together. were at home. Mm -hmm. A lot of people became content creators. I don't know if you created all those TikTok videos with your family or no, but that period, people started creating content. So that was what I feel pushed a lot of content creators to come out and also pushed businesses to realize why they need to be on social media. Let me tell you, you're just talented. Mm. You're just, <laughs> no, for real. Mm. You're someone that takes things seriously. Mm -hmm. Because, okay, now... I, I'll, okay, I'll, I'll be with, with my kids. Mm. Now, even during the COVID, mm. I was just home. Now, what was I doing in Houston? Taking pictures. That's creating content too. Well, I wasn't posting them. Oh. I was taking pictures. 
<laughs> and I just see, is this what COVID is causing? Stupid things. Mm -hmm. So many people <laughs> would have done the same thing. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. But you were using the time to do. So, no, there's something about you, you and I, and I'm trying to get it out. Honestly, I know fine, your parents taught you how to be mm. self, you know, dependent mm. and all that. Mm. What is that thing that you learned that, that, that kept you? That first, that make you feel like, you know what? I'm going to make something out of this. Because you went ahead to see, bought a camera. Yeah. After, even when you're not yeah, making because, anything. Uh, you know, when, you know, when you're comparing yourself to someone in particular, yeah. was there a goal that you set? What was that thing? There's something. I just wanted to do the best I could. Okay. You know, you're not going to, if you don't invest in your craft, you will not grow. Especially then. If people are using, if this, the trend or what's in vogue, what is to use cameras to take pictures. If you don't get a camera, you may not grow as fast as you want. So for me, it was like leveling up so that I can actually see the results. Because in as much as you're going to sit down and compare yourself, you also need to whether you're comparing the negative, draw positive lessons. Like, okay, this person takes their pictures this way. Mm -hmm, Can mm -hmm, I try this? Mm -hmm. Let's see if this works out for me. This style of content creation is, is working. Work. Let me try it. Maybe it'll work for me. And if it doesn't work for you, at least you know you tried. It didn't work for you. You try something else, right? Mm -hmm. But you have to keep, at each point in time, you keep leveling up. You can't stay the, at the same place. So buying the camera was a need because I needed to know that, hey, I'm doing, I'm ticking the boxes taking the, the boxes that are expected of this to That's see the results. You had, a, you had a target. Look, let me tell you. I'm giving myself <laughs> as an example. Okay. I had cameras. <laughs> <laughs> I had good cameras. Uh -huh. But some of them, I don't even know how to use them. Mm. But I had cameras. Mm. You know when you call Amazon uh, yeah. uh, Prime? Yeah. 24 hours, they are my door. Yeah. 24 hours. Yeah. But let me tell you, there's something special about you. Mm. Seriously. I don't know who's watching this. Honestly, you need to be an ambassador. And you're not even up to 30. And you're still moving. Seriously. Despite what you're doing, mm -hmm. what is that thing that you learned from your family? Is it from a friend that gives you that push? I don't, I don't, I don't know if there's... A, but or is it a book you're reading? <laughs> it's not a book. No, I, no for real. For real, no. But I, I, honestly, it's just the, the constant desire to keep going, really keep taking the next step you know you need to speak to our youth today yeah i just i think i think um you know different generations you know things change along the way it's just interesting to see how you know everybody adapts especially when you look at the typical comparison when they say gen z and millennials mm -hmm, you know how mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. and i'm saying that because i have younger siblings who are gen z and i just look at them I'm like this one yeah spoiled cha but you won't know <laughs> you won't you know, because there are certain things you didn't have to go through because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and good for them. Right. Yeah. Good for them. Take advantage of your privilege. The fact yeah. that you don't you don't have to suffer yeah. to make it right. That's true. Learn That's from true. other people's experiences and take That's advantage true. of the fact that you didn't have to suffer to grow faster. Like who says you have to start from poverty? If your parents are rich, Why use not? that to make more money. No, right. It's true. If you don't have to worry about paying your school fees, that's great. Use that to focus on something you love doing. But most, See if it works well, most out. of the kids don't know that they are privileged. Mm. Most of the kids don't know that you, you have everything. Mm. Make use of this time. Yeah. Why do you think that is, though? Is, is, is it, um, could it be upbringing? Could, be, could it be society? Could it be self-awareness? I think one is self-awareness. And um, I, I, I wouldn't say it's peer pressure. Mm. I wouldn't say that. And I think most times it's because before they tip, like my kid, for instance, mm. I use them as an example mm. because, you know, seeing them grow, I'll be with them. And I used to buy them gifts every year for their birthdays. Mm. Now they'll tell you what they want mm -hmm. at a point, like seven, six years. Mm. And the kind of things they ask, you know, and they, so if, 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 if you buy them clothes and shoes, that's not a gift. Because they get clothes and shoes because all the time. It's not it. a big deal. No, because they have it. Mm. They have surplus. Yeah. So for them, it's not a gift. Mm. Now, I begin to put myself present mm. to understand the difference yeah. from when I was coming out. To... I now understood. It's their time. It's yeah. different. Yeah. Now, as a parent, how do we cause the problem? 
their father will buy another laptop ahead mm. because why Costco is doing sale. Mm -hmm. So they have a head laptop. Mm -hmm. So now they can go to school and lose their computers and, and lose go. their chargers. And they won't tell you mm. because they know another the one, one is, is coming. coming. So sometimes these kids don't understand the privilege mm. that they have. I don't mm. know how to. It's really, really sad. Yeah, and especially when you're in a, um, certain like places, you know, there's some there Sometimes you get to immerse yourself with other people from other walks of life, and when you listen to how some other people grew up, I think it also reminds you of the kind of the privilege that you have when you hear stories of how people started. Exactly. How people started and how they, let's say, how they made it. And if right? you can relate. Yeah. Yeah. I think those being exposed to like um, a community or network outside of your own. But I want you to speak to our youth, honestly, mm. especially to our girls. Have you seen the trend of how these girls are dropped from vehicles and they're running mad mm. because of one guy, you know? Please, can you, do you have a word that doesn't speak to our girls? For me, I, my, the first thing I would say is find something you like doing and just be diligent to it. And I say diligence because it's not easy to be consistent, but the, the, best, the best things that come out of life come from consistency. If you want to lose weight, you have to work out. If you want to have a deeper relationship with God, you have to pray, you have to go to church. You know, it's, it's these little steps that you take every day to get you closer that, are, that is important. And when you skip a step, don't feel scared or don't feel embarrassed to start again. And to know that you are capable of doing anything you set your mind to. Because I think a lot of this comes from self-doubt. The fact that people don't think that they can actually create the life that they want to live. So they look to other people to create that for them. Quality, yeah, limiting. Yeah, yeah you, so. you have a limiting mindset already that you can't do it. So why would you try if you already feel like you can't do it? Instead, you'd just rather go to someone else to give that to you. But you can do anything you Let set your mind to. Let me go out this just... How soon are you planning to get married? <laughs> <laughs> well, according to God's timeline, right? Obviously, you're not going to marry yourself now. So somebody of will course. ask you. Oh, no, some people don't want to get married. Oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah, yeah. yeah I have married. some friends who don't want to get married. Yeah, definitely. Marriage, kids. Do you have a time frame? I don't have a time frame. I used to when I was younger. But then okay. when you grow up, you're like, you're, the time frames you set for yourself. Things don't happen according to that time frame. So instead, you just trust God to get everything done at the right time. And in the, in the end of the, the long run, when you look back, you'll be like, oh, I'm glad it happened the way it happened anyway. So what's the rush? But the, but the ones that are coming to you, is it the type of people you have in your mind? Well, let's see. Uh, so far, mm, nah, but then... They had the kind of people. The, you know, with the negative press that marriages get these days, it's important to get it right or not do it at all. That's where I am. You know, get it right and get it right. You know, it's not like when well, I'm not saying I don't want to get married, but yeah. I think it's important to be patient to get the right person. person. So you don't end up, you know, with all those you motivational know? stories. <laughs> oh, ladies, listen to me. Oh, I wish I had done this. But you know, sometimes you get the men that are coming and in your eyes are not the kind of person I expected. Yeah. Is it, is, I mean, this is something I would ask you in this situation. Because you would probably have more advice for me <laughs> <laughs> that I can You're learn. You're telling from. me this Because <laughs> <laughs> what do I know now? So I have to, I have to ask for advice. So yeah, I think maybe keeping an open, keeping an, an open mind. Yeah. I'm because even when I talk to people that got married, I'm like, D did you think you'd marry someone like? They're like, no. But no, I'm no. glad I did. You no, know that. But it's true because I, I, I wanted to marry a white man. Mm. That was my desire. Mm -hmm. even, even my husband knows. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to marry a, a, a white man because mm -hmm. I didn't want um, um, stress from family. Yeah, okay. I didn't want to because I don't know how to please people. Mm. That's why I don't like to go to work. I, I like you to know me for who I am. Mm -hmm. Know me for the crazy I am. Mm -hmm. I don't want to impress you. Yeah. And then tomorrow you get to know that's not who well, I am. Yeah. How do I keep up yeah. with that? I don't I know how to do that. Yeah. That's a problem. So mm. I wanted to marry a white man. Mm. So I didn't have eye for anyone around me. Mm. And I was close to so many people. But I didn't think about that. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, I didn't think about it. Mm. My pastor, you know, got involved. Mm. But I didn't think, even when my husband was coming, I didn't see him as my husband. I didn't mm. think. My mind was not there. You didn't look at him in that no, aspect at No, I looked at him as a brother yeah. in church. And you know, the funny, what you're saying is what happens with a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Do you understand? They end up marrying. Like, oh, wow. I, didn't, yeah. I never thought you would be my husband. But yeah. I mean, thank God. It yeah. makes sense, you know. Yeah. When they get married, they're like, oh, we hide. Spec. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I get it now. I get it. Yeah, but I tell you, any man that will want to impress you mm. from the beginning by going to get a, a friend's car, mm. for instance, if he doesn't have, mm. that's trying to go get a nice clothes mm. that he cannot afford, mm. is a no-no. Mm. Mm, of course, because that, that's yeah. how much longer can you keep up with those appearances Same anyways. thing with the women. Yeah. You know, but you are beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. For real. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, and for you, you, you know, because of what you, you know, you're mature. Like, yeah, I, I probably yeah. act older than. Yeah, than you. Yeah. That that shows that you're really around people. Yeah. Yeah. That's why. That's why I said it most. Is. For the most part, I've had older friends. Most yeah. of my close friends are older than me, some decades older, and we get along just great. So, yeah. perhaps that has a lot to do with that as well. But that means you're going to be a very good woman when you're married. <laughs> okay. It's true. Okay. <laughs> you know I'm hopeful, you know, because I think another thing is um, um, women, we expect so much from the men, but we also know that there are things that we have to work on as well. As well. To be able to expect, you know, the kind of person that you want to end yeah, up with as yeah. well. And then training yourself to yeah. be that person. To be that person, very especially important. for someone like me that I'm very independent. Yes. I like to just be on my, do things on my own, decide things on my own. So it'll be interesting adjusting because yeah. especially the typical nigerian Niger. that's Niger. if, you're going, if you're going to marry Niger. i will marry a nigerian okay then that's good then mm. you're settled in already yeah i'm not because i'm i'm gonna live in nigeria i'm not jack wine anywhere you don't no have reason. to japan I'll be no japan. i will but i will marry a nigerian oh, good well you know but if i have <laughs> Many for many people like Nigeria, you don't have to jack bar. Mm. What I'm saying is that but there are some men here that have it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially like, they have especially right. um, people who have been exposed. Yes. I yes. think people who have especially I'm gonna say yes. this, yeah. people who have lived abroad for a bit yeah. of time, they yeah. don't um they think differently. Yeah. You can tell yeah. from the way they behave. Yeah. It's different from And they think and then when people see they think you're not. Yes. Yes, they think you're they not. They think you're not. Yeah. yeah. That's true. But you know, it pays. To yeah. To really see a different world. Yeah. So you understand life. Especially for people life. who have the privilege or can afford mm. to do that. That's mm. true. Anyway, it's been wonderful. Honestly. Thank you. I say we should just go on and on and on. <laughs> no, for real. Mm. You're very, very positive. And then I like your strengths. Mm. I don't know where you draw your strength from. Can you say that one word? From God, honestly. Really? Because I, I say this a lot. I'm, people think I'm happy-go-lucky. But at first, I just want to thank God for peace of mind yeah. out, outputs. And I think that's probably another reason why I was able to hang on for so long. Waiting. Because yeah. I was like, you know, it, it'll be fine. And I always tell people, I'm like, even if what you're doing now is not um, working out, it could no lead to where you're supposed to be, right? So it's not working out now, but like the, the steps that you took, the things that you did, the things you failed at, when you finally get to a, 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 the next place, it's going to come in handy. And I say that because I created content for 10 years and it didn't work. I'm, I'm not going to say I failed, but it didn't work out the way it was supposed to. But when Sia Bujak picked up three years later, I had all that knowledge from doing it for 10 years and the network of people that I knew over time to add to it. And that's another reason why there was speed. Because people were like, oh, well, Sia Bujak, when do you guys want to start? So I'm like, oh, it's just three years. And I'm like, wow. And you're doing so much. I'm like, yeah, because I had this backlog of experience doing it before. I did nine to five and those little things actually play a role when you get down to it. So there's no knowledge. Then no knowledge is wasted. Lost, yeah. No mistake or and you, you, no mistake is ever wasted. It'll all eventually kind of build up and you use the knowledge that you gain at the end of the day. So thank you so much. Thank you for having it's me. It's been an honor to have you. Seriously. Had a great time. I'm so honored to have you here. Thank you for having and me. And everyone will come here, we treat them very nicely. Yes, and you do. Especially, you are seriously welcome. Thank anytime. you very much. Thank you. So, guys, in case you just tuned in, we will talk in the chat with Miss Selaudu, a wonderful content creator. Of course, the face behind. See a boja that you don't see. <laughs> <laughs> so, she will come your way again. This is the Kindly Crown Shield. Subscribe, follow. And we'll see you. Be positive, y'all. Bye for now. Thank
It's time to talk.